Hello and welcome to another MI How To video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's How To, we're gonna show you how to properly install an NSK linear guide, and also tell you about some upgrade options that are available. Helping us out is Scott Havener. He is with NSK America. Scott, Hi, welcome. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Very good, thank you. I am excited. Uh, we got lots of rails and slides and calipers. That means we got a lot of stuff going on here. So um, how do you actually wanna start this today? Well, I think the first step is, like it should be, let's do the proper PPE. I like this guy. So. Uh, you should be doing the same thing too. Whatever the job calls for, wear the proper PPE because safety is always priority number one. All right, Scott, floor is yours. First thing we want to do is make sure that uh, we've wiped off all the rest preventive oil mm -hmm. off the linear guides. That yeah. way we get clean, easy handling. We don't have contamination. We got a nice, clean environment to work in. Yeah, make contaminants sure are no good, especially when you're sliding rails. Exactly. It gets stuck, and then maybe down the road there's rust and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So. so and the other thing is, you want to make sure that in your work area and maybe your storage area that you have a flat surface and clean so you're not inheriting bringing something into the, in the into the installation so okay. so we'll start by doing that um, once that's all done first thing we're going to do is we're going to install what we call a reference rail which is this guy right here now we this particular demonstration we've already got it bolted down but normally right. you would put this in here typically in a general industry application you're going to have a machine surface or maybe a locating pin something like that that you right. put it up against and tighten it down and torque it down now for 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 what we're doing today, there's a lot of different methods you can use. This is just kind of like a common method, General so everybody industry. understands how we're doing. Generally. Exactly, general okay. industry. So that, you know, there's obviously higher levels, and you need other equipment to do that. We do high precision stuff, but this is general industry. Works for a lot of applications. We will start with the reference rail, and that this particular case is all bolted down. We've already bolted and torqued it down, so it's already in there. That's our start point. All right, and then we're going to look at the second rail. So this particular case, we're, we laid it in here loose, so it's sitting here, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to just kind of snug it up. Um, you can get a good idea and where to put it, and you can set just to make sure you have the same distance, the right distance here. When we put the table on, it will actually set that distance perfectly, but you got to right. have a starting point. Now, when you're using the calipers, we're not going to just use it at one end and the other end. You, you'll go along the way to make sure that the measurements are close it, before we actually tighten stuff. That's correct, especially if you got a really long run, really uh -huh. long run. They, there will be some wave to it. You'll have to adjust that, right? Exactly right. So once we have kind of that in place, what would be the next step? So next thing we're going to do, we have our master rail bolted down. It has two sliders on it. We're going to bring our table in. Right. And the table is going to help us set the parallel set. And what you're going to do is you're going to tighten up um, all the all the bolts that go into the sliders on this reference side, the master rail. All right, how many bolts are we talking about So we got 16 here? in this application, so there's four holes per slider. We have four sliders. All right. So we'll go ahead and start putting the bolts in. All right. Now, I noticed that you made these a little bit tighter, but you did not quite tighten these nope, up yet. that's exactly right. Again, once again, everything's referenced off this side. So we're going to go ahead and lock these down. We'll, right. we'll go through and torque everything down once we get everything the way we want it. Uh -huh. um, so those are these are tight. Those are snug. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically adjust this rail, how the sliders move up and down the rail. So it's going to sort of self-align in, in a way. So these were, these bolts, are, remember, they're snug. Right. Not, not tight, but snug. So they'll move. So as we get down the way, we'll, we'll snug these up. And as up. long as this moves relatively uh, back and forth the same way, you can tighten that. Exactly. And, and that, that creates our final tightening for this. You got it. Now, uh, how do users know that there's an acceptable tolerance as you're doing it once this is all done? What you can do, Tom, is you can... Um, you can just simply feel the friction force as you go down here. If right, they're misaligned, it will get really tight. You'll feel that friction change. Or it may even stop if, it could, if you, you could don't get, do that. If it's really far out, it could stop. Right. So basically, this feels really smooth both yeah. ways when you agree. So we've got that down. And what you would do then is you would go through and make sure you torque everything down, you know, starting with these and get the rails tight down. And then you're good. Okay. Now, there's a, there's a dial. Isn't there a correct a, a, a yeah. dial that can actually you know, tell if, it, if everything is right? Exactly, so if you wanted to really verify with some, some uh, numbers about how you, mm -hmm. you can put a dial gauge on the, on the plate here, the movable plate, and you can put the, the, the end of the plunger on the rail and you can slide this back and forth and it'll give you, it'll give you a variation. So you're looking for how much deviation you have Almost like a moving caliper in a way. Exactly, so then yeah. you can look at that and then what happened, then we take that number, that data, and you look, at, NSK has a, a tolerance table that you can use for the NH and NS series, and you see, are you in that range or not? If you're not in that range, you sort of reverse what we just did, go mm -hmm. back and try it again. Okay, now, when you talk about 
uh, an important takeaway for this. Take your time, make sure that the rails are perfectly aligned. That's going to give you the maximum life for your bearings, correct? Exactly right. There are two other things that we have to come into play here. Uh, there are two culprits that can cause a linear guide premature failure. Uh, one is lubrication, second one being uh, contamination. Now, you cleaned it earlier. Yes. So to make sure everything was nice and clean, but there's something that they call the NSK K1 lubrication unit. Let's talk about that. All right. So the NSK K1 lubrication unit looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, it is a maintenance-free option for linear guides. You, you bolt it on. It's pretty simple. I'll show you how to do it in a second. But it, five years, 25,000 kilometers on the usage on that. We've gone beyond that in yeah. certain applications. That's like halfway around the world, it's too. A long way. There's also a couple of other upgrade options that we had talked about earlier. That's correct. So depending on what the contamination level is, this, if you're in some really nasty environments, what we call the HP seal, high-performance seal. Mm -hmm. it, same th same principle as what the K1 is. It bolts right on the outboard. Things like woodworking and really nasty environments. Okay. You can use that. This second one here is a scraper plate, wiper, um, it, protector plate. It can be used for things that you get some really hard stuff on the rail. Uh, weld slag, things like that, that will be outboard and would push it off. And you can upgrade those in very easily on the sliders. So Tom, this is the K1 uh, unit installed here. So what we've done here is this side, it's already bolted up. This is what it'll look like when you buy it from us or you're gonna do an installation yourself. The installation yourself really has three main components here. So you've got the backing plate that comes with the kit. The K1 unit looks like this, slide it up against there. And you've got the outboard wiper seal and two screws um, installs it. So you fill up, fill up screw driver, you can put it on. Awesome. Well, Scott, well, thank you very much. Thanks, we really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Scott Habner. He is with NSK Americas. Hopefully you enjoyed our video today. You know, we got a whole bunch of videos at mihowto.com. I'm Tom Clark, your host for today. Thanks so much for watching.